Feeling wired but tired is a real pain when you're on the brink of burnout, you're feeling exhausted, you're desperately wanting sleep, but your mind just can't stop ticking away. So in today's episode, I'm going to share with you two key elements, one strategy and one mindset shift that's different to what most people are talking about to help you to embrace a restful night's sleep and wake up feeling refreshed. Stay tuned. Welcome to The Bliss Movement, a podcast for big-hearted, driven women daring to be great who know that this starts by pouring love into themselves first. I'm Dr. Fee. I'm passionate about helping women to stop tuning out and burning out, but to tune within, reconnect with your heart, feel lit up, follow your bliss, and live life on your terms. So, get ready to expand your life beyond what you thought was possible when it comes to healing, wealth, love, purpose, and leadership. Recently, I found myself caught up in a trend on Instagram, believing that there'd been a recent study that proved that women actually needed more sleep than men. (laughs) And I know I'm not alone in this. Actually, there wasn't a study, okay? And the scientific evidence on this specific topic is quite limited, certainly not definitive, but it was really came about because of a number of influencers putting their their opinion together and it gained traction because it kind of makes sense. And, you know, the reason why I got on board with it was because there are a number of factors that contribute to this perception that women require more sleep. And the first is that we are cyclical in nature, right? And we forget this being in a very masculine dominant world where there's this sort of expectation that our energy levels, sleep, our emotionality is a flat line, like consistent, stable, but actually we have real hormonal fluctuations throughout our menstrual cycle. And not to mention, we also have huge fluctuations in pregnancy or menopause, right? And this will impact our sleep patterns. And I know for myself and for most of my clients, you know, there is a shift in how we sleep. If you really pay attention at certain phases of the menstrual cycle, there will be an increase in sleep disturbance or a requirement for more sleep or even perhaps insomnia because of hormonal changes. And this is going to be a really key takeaway, especially around this topic of wide but tired, of how important understanding that all our hormones speak together. Okay, and this is going to be a takeaway for you. So the second is, is that, you know, research suggests that women, well, we just think a lot more. Okay, we have higher cognitive demands. We multitask more than men, which puts a lot more load on our mind and our brain. And also, you know, we have different emotional processing compared to men, don't we? <laughs> and so all of these factors may contribute to why we expend a hell of a lot more mental power <laughs> and therefore have a greater need for sleep in order to support our, the restoration, our cognitive restoration. You know, when we sleep, that's actually when our brain gets to refresh. If we don't get enough sleep, what happens? We get brain fog. Certainly something that I experience in that newborn phase, you know, where you're just all over the place with your, with your sleep, not getting enough and oh, it's so hard, right? <laughs> Adjusting, especially with your first, with my first child, second time, my body had, had a lot more was used to it, knew what to expect. But the first, and it's just that depth of brain fog. And the reason is, is when you sleep, that's when your brain actually can refresh and restore itself. And the other really important note is that women are known, like it's way more prevalent in women than men to have a diagnosis of insomnia or sleep apnea or other sleep disorders. And so with that, then there's going to be a greater need to sleep to compensate for those times, those nights that we don't get the restorative sleep that we get. So there's a little bit of science there as we're about to, you know, step into this whole topic about wired but tired. And, you know, the first question that is always, I always get is like, well, Dr. Fee, what's the normal amount of sleep? And again, I think we just can't, rely on what someone tells us in terms of what the body needs. The best thing you can do for yourself is to focus your energy and attention on knowing yourself better and really discerning what your needs are and having the confidence and giving yourself permission to give yourself what it is that you need. You know, typically you may need between seven or nine hours per night, but Actually, depending on the cyclical, the cycle, what season of life you're in, I mean, 
For a lot of my clients, they're working mums and they've been struggling since having babies in terms of energy or lack of vitality. And the reason is, is because they've never actually given themselves permission to really rest and recover. And sleep is a really important component in that and giving themselves permission to just sleep when they need to sleep or sleep for longer. And obviously there's a lot in that because we need the support and the resources, but Generally, when you understand its requirement of the body and unless you give it what it needs, it's going to be very hard for you to go back to those baseline levels of energy or vitality that you so desire. <laughs> and when we don't sleep, what happens? Our emotionality gets <laughs> really amplified. What happens if a toddler doesn't get to sleep? Oh my gosh, you know about it. They're angry, then they're sad. They're on the ground having a tantrum, right? They get, <laughs> they get really, really oh my gosh, an emotional wreck, but we're the same. Our emotional nature is the same. Yes, we have this logical mind, the reasoning, rational mind, but within us, our emotional nature, we still sleep and nourishment is a basic human need. And if we don't give ourselves that, it will have an impact on us on every level. So cognitive, how we think, how we can actually access solutions, creative thinking, same with, you know, how regular, how balanced we feel, our ability to manage ourselves and have emotional resilience and regulate sleep is a very very important component but also in terms of how our body can rest and restore come back to homeostasis and be in that state of the parasympathetics that is so important when it comes to healing and restoration and uh, vitality and procreation and what's required for us to really be in a state that is yeah, is is sustainable for life, you know, <laughs> for a good, good life, then sleep is important with that. And, and, and I just, as a society, we just don't get this because, you know, in America, they're saying like 50 to 70 million Americans have chronic or ongoing sleep disorders. Australia, it's probably similar in terms of percentages because this is research back from 2017 and it says two and three adults report at least one sleep problem. So most people will say that there's something not right with their sleep and almost half, like one in two, have at least two sleep related problems. So that's like difficulties going to sleep, waking up during the night, waking up too early, you know, a mixture of those. And it's a really, really, really big deal because there are incredible studies that show that link between sleep and our health. Uh, one in particular, which was called Sleep and Health Study, involved over 30,000 participants. So this is a good, this is a good study. And I followed them for several, several years. And what they showed is that those who slept less than six hours or more than nine hours per night had a high risk in developing all the chronic health conditions, um, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, but also mental health disorders. So again, sleep is important. Okay, and it's why in my burnout to bliss component in the My Blissful Life, we really focus on sleep a lot because it is something that we can just dismiss or, and I'm going to talk about, especially if you find yourself sabotaging your nighttime routines, what you can do, what's one of the most helpful things that you can do so that you do prioritize your sleep. Because I'm sure you've heard this before, that sleep is important, but are you actually prioritizing it? Are you really honoring it as a fundamental need and really prioritizing it consistently so that you can get to sleep, sleep well in a deep, nurturing way and wake up feeling refreshed? <laughs> so feeling wired but tired, what do I mean by that? Oh gosh, this is such a frustration loop to be in. On one hand, it's like your mind is buzzing away, thinking about all the thoughts and worries and responsibilities, the pressures, the demands, the conversations you had, the things you said, the things you didn't say, the things that he said to me, the things that he didn't say to me, <laughs> what I should have said to my boss, what my boss should have said to me. And the mind just is so wired, unable to calm down. It's constantly like engaged, poking about the day that you've had. And so you can't actually settle or feel a state of calm or, you know, actually support yourself to sleep because of this buzz. It's like it is a buzz, even when the body is desperately in need of rest. And so on the other hand, 
you know, there is a sense of just absolute uh, depletion, exhaustion, uh, a sense of fatigue because of the burnout. It can be so overwhelming, like a bone tired, not just I'm tired, but like I'm, there's a crushing sense of fatigue, absolute depleted of energy, but I just cannot switch off. And it, you cannot find that ability to drift off to sleep. And, or if, 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 you, if you do, you wake up. And you wake up frequently or you are, uh, you know, it's like you're switched on during the night. It's like you're just under the surface of sleep. So any sound or a, a little snort from your partner or, you know, your kids move in the bed and you can hear it. It's like a part of your mind is still ticking away, noticing the environment and looking out for it's like hyper vigilant. And the, mod- the mind and the body are, are simply out of sync. Now, it can be to that extreme, but it can also be leading up to it because remember, it's never black or white. There's always a spectrum. There's always a hell of a lot of gray. And you might just notice that at a certain time at night, you know, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night, you actually get your brain back. A lot of women talk about how they become more focused or able to see things clearly. This is when they do find solutions. A sense of clarity comes to them at this particular time of night. And so for them, they don't want to go to sleep. They don't want to switch off because it's actually a sense of clarity versus the mummy brain that they've had or the fatigue brain that they've had throughout the day. And so it becomes really difficult because on one hand, they know this isn't sustainable, but on the other hand, right now it's serving them a lot in life because this is when they can get through a ton of stuff. They've got their old productive self back. And the reason for this is because of our hormones. Okay. So let's have a look at this, what I mean, because when you understand what's really at play, you'll understand then why the strategy that I'm suggesting to you is really, really critical. So burnout survival mode, living in a fight, flight, sympathetic, dominant state and insomnia or this wide but tired state is very closely intertwined because of our hormones, all of our hormones speaking together and cortisol, which is referred to as the stress hormone, it plays a significant role in our sleep pattern. Okay, so our wake sleep pattern is based on two hormones, cortisol and melatonin. So when we experience stress, anxiety, or we get, there's a perceived threat, we get an elevation in our cortisol levels. Okay, and this can happen at nighttime because we might still be thinking about work, we might be getting engaged in a book, we might be watching something exciting on Netflix, and so we're, we're thinking Now, as you've heard me talk about before, stress is not the baddie. Stress is, there is a role for stress in life. Stress, you know, having a cortisol surge can be really helpful in boosting our immune system, helping us to think, be productive, stay focused. (laughs) But when we're in a state of prolonged stress, this is where things go really haywire. And so at nighttime, you're supposed to have a dip in your cortisol. You know, it's to go really low. And the reason is, is because cortisol and melatonin, melatonin is your sleep drug. So if cortisol is present, it actually suppresses your melatonin. So this is really important. If you're activating your cortisol, you will not have the sleep drug. You will not be able to support yourself or just switch off and go to sleep straight away because you've got too much of a physiological shift happening that's there helping you to think things through. You feel restless. You want to get out there and do stuff. So you can't actually relax into that deep sleep. And when, you know, clients are in a more extreme state of burnout, you can have high levels of cortisol throughout your night. So there's a a disrupted sleep happening with no melatonin, no melatonin. Okay. And so melatonin is meant to be high during the night and then it dips down in the morning so that when you wake up, you've got a nice peak of cortisol. It's like Disney movie. You like open the curtain, sun, sun streaming through and you've got your, your little Disney characters like meeting you in the morning and you're singing good morning. But in burnout, if you don't have any cortisol in the morning because you've used it all up overnight 
and you certainly, and you have a delayed response with your melatonin. I've seen this in clients when I was working as an integrative doctor is that they're getting such a high level of melatonin in the morning. And this is where you just got that real hangover effect. This is what you're meant to be having at 10 o'clock the night before, but you're getting it at like 6 a.m. in the morning when you're supposed to be waking up. So this is a really important to understand this real hormonal issues at play, which is going to be more pronounced in women. This is how I started today's episode about talking about, you know, of course, a different you know, parts in your cycle, our sex hormones talk to cortisol and talks to melatonin. And so, of course, we're going to have a cyclical nature to our sleep. And if we're going to be in a constant state of survival, you will have an impact on your sleep-wake cycle, okay? And this is where when you're feeling wired but tired, physically you're tired, it's time for you to go to bed, but you've got this high cortisol that's keeping you alert at the wrong time at the wrong time. And so it's about really understanding how do I then support my cortisol peak in the morning? How do I could support my, my cortisol throughout the day? How do I support myself in ensuring that cortisol dips down low so that melatonin, my sleep drug, is present at night to support me in having a deep, nurturing, nourishing, restful night's sleep? Okay. So melatonin it is produced in the response to darkness. Okay. Light triggers cortisol. And this is why as a part of your nighttime routine, and we'll talk about this in a second, it's important to reflect on how do you support yourself? If you are wide, but tired, I want you to think of yourself as a baby that is hyper-stimulated. And, and, you know, if you've had a child, you know what I mean? It's like when babies get to that point of being really overtired, they cannot settle. They're hyper-stimulated. They'll just do micro sleeps and they're irritable. And it takes a while to get them back into a really nice rhythm with their sleep. We're no different. And so if you're finding that your sleep is compromised or you're curious about how you would feel if your sleep was more restful so that you could wake up feeling more refreshed and balanced and in a state of harmony, then I'm going to encourage you to really take note. And you got to like, we often have to work, put a lot of effort and focus. A part of us, you know, on, on one level, we're just like, oh, surely it should just come naturally. No, sweetheart, you've been burning the candle at both ends. You're actually going to have to pour a bit more energy and focus and attention into supporting yourself out of this hypervigilant baby wide state, <laughs> irritable baby state. So let's talk about the first um, strategy that I'm going to invite you to really think about now that you've got the foundation, it's not just about going, okay, I just need a night, nighttime routine. A lot of people talk about this. It's, it's really about thinking for yourself, what are the specific things that I need to support my, my, my night, to support my sleep? I can provide you with a, a list of, yeah, okay, well, you know, make sure you have consistent bedtime, make sure that you have the curtains closed and that it's nice and dark, um, you know, that you're not, you're limiting screen time so that you're not like activating that cortisol. But it's really about reflecting on your life and thinking about where is the cortisol or why is it that my cortisol is being triggered at night? Because there's a whole lot of different factors that trigger cortisol. It might be how you're spending your day. If you're just racing and pressured and you're just like under the, under the pump and you're not actually supporting yourself and on a, on a level, your cortisol throughout the day, then that might be a big factor. It might be that you're eating way too much sugar before you go to sleep that triggers cortisol. It might be that you're not necessarily using screens, but you're activating your mind by reading a lot of, I don't know, adventure. One of my clients who reads a lot of um, fantasy romance and books, and it might be that that just gets you really activated. It might be Netflix and scrolling on Instagram is just keeping you thinking. So you might be wearing all the, the glasses and putting the right filters on your phone and all of that, but actually it's just that you're triggering cortisol overthinking and then of and, and expecting yourself just to switch off and it might be that 
you know, for my clients, and this is what I teach in a burnout to bliss, it's, it's about process. It's about actually thinking about what are the things that I get to take away versus just adding in. A lot of my clients have tried adding in all like the sleeping tablets or melatonin or magnesium and bars and all these extra things. But actually, sometimes you get the greatest shift by considering what do I need to remove in order to support my cortisol not to be spiking at that time of night. So that's the first one. Now, Let's talk about when you are wired but tired and you really want to prioritize your sleep, but you just find yourself doing the exact opposite. Now, if that's you, I'm not beating you up. I have a lot of compassion. Most of my clients in my community have been in this experience and really doubling down on your nighttime rhythm is key for you to then start the next day. You know, sometimes we can be focused on all the things we got to do and add in like meditation in the morning, going for walks and all of that. But if you don't, if you don't rock your nights, if you don't buckle down and really take care of yourself and really prioritize an awesome, what I call a nighty night rhythm, <laughs> there's no chance of you eating healthy tomorrow or going for exercise, doing your exercise or waking up early, being to work before, you know, with a with with lots of energy bright eyed bushy tail because you just didn't have the nighttime sleep you didn't you didn't really do the things that are really important that's going to support all of that and so often you'll find like a lot of my clients will find themselves sabotaging themselves even though they know better i need to get to bed i need to have sleep i need to you know i get to wind down, have a bath, drink some chamomile tea, take my magnesium, you know, do all the things that are going to support me. But you know what? I just, I just not going to do it. I just keep slipping up. I I keep wanting to watch Netflix. I keep wanting to sit on the couch and talk to my husband. I do the exact opposite. And the reason is, is because there's an emotional need in that sabotage. Like once you just understand that, Often the thing that trips us up with our nighttime rhythm is that there is a requirement, there's a need for me time. And I'm going to invite you to think about that in your own life. Like for, it might be that there's a need for connection and you want to spend some time with your partner, but very often, you know, it is this endless scrolling or it's this catching up on Netflix or, you know, sabotaging yourself with doing all the things or, you know, maybe it's just like you you finally ticked off your entire list and now it's time to go to bed. But actually, I just want to go sit on the couch and have some me time. And it's just, we got to, we got to honor that. We got to just recognize that that's really what's at play. It's not bad. We're not bad for wanting to have me time. It's a basic curious. <laughs> we got to meet our own emotional needs. Me time is so, so important. But the question then becomes, okay, if that's what's really at play, how do we then give ourselves what it is that we need at a different time? Because if you don't do this, you're going to sabotage yourself no matter how many lists you have or instructions or how many promises you give yourself. I just got to get to bed early. I just got to get to bed earlier. If you're not actually giving yourself me time at other times in the day or week, you will sabotage yourself. Now, if it's your connection with your partner that's sabotaging why you're getting not able to actually switch off and go to bed or, you know, maybe you're eating all the wrong things because you've been feeling stressed out or maybe it's because you're drinking too much alcohol and then you're feeling better but then uh, you start feeling anxious during the middle of the night and you wake up feeling hungover and (laughs) all of those things. It's about recognising why are we doing that and let's solve that. Because your emotional nature wins for better or worse every single time. It doesn't matter if you're taking all of the right things, adding in all these things or have the best intentions with your nighttime rhythm. If you don't actually meet your emotional nature, work with it, you will sabotage it. So I really hope that these two things have triggered you to think about your sleep in a different way. And how to support yourself if you are experiencing that wide but tired. It's about really looking at how do I support myself on that level of removing the triggers for my cortisol. So what what can I remove versus adding in? What can I remove that's going to really help me and support my body to switch off 
and actually support melatonin to come and have the sleep drug there so I can fall off to sleep and have a restful sleep. But also the other element of mindset of really taking care of ourselves and nourishing and nurturing, prioritizing our sleep, even though there's been a pattern to sabotage it. Now, if you're interested in more about it, I love supporting women to really get to know themselves, honor their needs, give themselves what it is that they require so that they can show up powerfully for themselves and others in life. And this is about reclaiming your life every single day. It is really like we've just touched on a little bit when it comes to how to honor your sleep and really you know, if you're not sleeping well, you're feeling wired, but tired, it is a wake up call. It is a signal that your body is giving you saying, Hey, you know, your hormones are out of balance. Hey, time to take attention because otherwise we're spiraling into collapse or a train wreck when it comes to our health, but also relationships and also how we show up powerfully in life. And if you want some support with that, then I I can't wait to connect with you. You can always um, apply to have a connection call or a breakthrough session with me or my team. And it's just this an amazing opportunity to get really clear on where you're at, how you want to be feeling, whether or not we're a good fit, and what are the next steps that you can take that's really going to support you to show up and claim a life that you truly love, which is the health, the love, the career that you crave. Fantastic. I hope you've got so much out of today's session. Sending you love and a good restful night's sleep tonight. Take care. It has been so beautiful spending this time with you. If you found today's episode inspiring or helpful, please subscribe, give us a good review and share the love. I invite you to be a part of the Bliss Movement. Join our Bliss Sisterhood or apply to join my Expanding Bliss program. The links are in my bio and I cannot wait to be doing life with you soon. Stay tuned for the next episode where I'll be sharing more training, stories, strategies and solutions to guide you towards your bliss.